what all the merchants want to know. It's when am I big enough, right? Like when am I a somebody, when is my store large enough to handle this? And one, I think it's great to use these tools to grow your store, to get the word out there. I think social media is huge. So once you really get the word out there about your store and you're seeing that traffic, once you get that traffic, that's when you need to start using these marketing tools. And even if you don't know your customer too, too well yet, I think it's okay to still take that risk because the integrations and the ecosystem will start telling you who your customers are. And some things you will already know, but like we mentioned earlier, you'll start learning something. So I think integrations that are marketing that push information out like Clavio, like Attentive, and as well as Fast Simon, where the programs are huge, but you can just use a certain component, right? If you just want to use our search bar and autocomplete, that's a marketing tool right there. So as soon as they come into your site, maybe it's their first time, your homepage looks amazing. They're going to click into the search bar. Boom. You need to start putting things right there in your store. Start telling your customer who you are as a merchant, what you're selling, what are your top seller. So things, little things like that are actually huge because if someone starts falling in love with your product, at the end of the day, sometimes the price is not going to be priority for your customer. They just want the, they just want the product in their hand. They want to try it. They want to have a review and then maybe they'll come back. So you have yeah, to, no have one, to, no one wants to, to compete with pricing, right? Like <laughs> right. that's a race to the bottom. basically. <laughs> exactly. So you really have to create this journey um, from the beginning, I think merchants really need to work on their journey from the beginning and kind of understand what your scale is and what integrations and parts of the ecosystem will be able to nurture even as you're starting or as you're just beginning to understand where your niche uh, is in the e-commerce space. Because yes, these are big integrations, but sometimes, you know, just start basics with these integrations, start learning and you'll really start to see those conversions come in. Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome to another episode of The Link, E-Commerce Connections. In today's episode, we're going to be talking with Chanel Chebaski. She's a customer success manager at Fast Simon, and we're going to be talking about AI for e-commerce, how AI can help us optimize a shopping experience in e-commerce and how, and, and, and we're going to try to understand what really AI is, right? Because we've seen it like in many types of applications. So we're going to talk about just for e-commerce, how can AI actually increase your e-commerce business? How are you, Chanel? Welcome. Hi, I am so excited to be here, Diego. So thank you so much for inviting me on. Uh, yeah, AI is huge in e-commerce right now. So it's a very hot topic. I think a lot of people should know how it could drive their um, store as well as the benefits for your team and things like that, how it works as well on the logic side um, so that you can actually reach your goals. So there's, you know, you hear AI so many times like in video games and other other contexts and it really is a powerful tool. But for e-commerce, I'm seeing so much success. With our merchants right let's now. let's get let's take two steps back right because sometimes we know you know when you get like this uh, terms that get transformed into buzzwords very very quickly you lose the meaning of it it's like when when they added the i to iphone everything was i something you know and ai is yeah. everything is ai now right so i want to understand like for six years old right what is ai like from from the core what 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 does what does ai mean sure so ai means it's machine learning so the more that you use a program it learns your habits it follows your clicks for this specific um situation and what it does is as it learns it produces logic that further is personal to your journey now this in any context it's machine learning. So that's the root of it all is it's this bot, if you want to think of it that way, that just collects all this information and kind of spits out um, these string of actions that are 
most appropriate to that user, right? So AI is like uh, in personalization, it's really great. For example, something really simple is when you click a filter, it goes to the top, right? Because the AI is learning that you're using that filter often. So it's just going to bump it up to the top to make it more convenient for you. Does that cool. make sense? I think that's that's kind of basics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanted you to share what's the basics for people to understand. So basically, it's a, it's an algorithm, right? That Correct. starts reading past behaviors and starts understanding. And, and, and as you learn the past, you can predict the future in a, in a very simplistic way. So it allows uh, to be on top of your game. And you can use that and you can apply it for many different applications. But from what... Um, this episode is about it's like how do you apply it for an e-commerce website right and uh, i've seen that fast simon has actually expanded the the services the, the technology that that it offers can, can you explain like what was that evolution for fast simon sure so fast simon started off as just search it was just a very simple search bar um this was about maybe seven ten years ago and now it has evolved into this huge tool that our customers use for a variety of industries, right? I know the most common one is retail. We all now shop <laughs> online for our clothes. You know, we go to the mall for emergencies, but we don't want to leave out other kinds of merchants and industries. So we've just built this entire tool to expand and kind of catch what everyone really needs. And as we continue to grow, we want to stay up to date with what our merchants want, right? So a lot of our roadmap comes from inspiration from our merchants that just happens in dialogue. Yeah, you know, I would love to see this. And now we have merchandising, right? And that's, you know, to circle back, uh, that's where AI comes in. You know, AI, the machine learning happens all the time. That's the benefits is it's constantly happening live. So now merchants don't have to collect all that data all the time and, you know, test constantly. Um, but that's kind of the evolution of Fast Simon. And we realized, okay, people don't want to put in that much effort, right? So they kind of want to just toggle something on and let the monster eat. And so that's kind of how Fast Simon has literally evolved into, you know, you just, it's like Legos, you, you know, one feature, one feature, and then suddenly you have like this big monstrous, um, you know, we're still search, but it's so much now, so much more than search, but our bread and butter and at the core, it's all driven by search. But within that, yes, of course, we're going to incorporate technologies like AI to make the journey wherever you are, regardless in our Fast Simon program, it's personal. And customer. you know, talking about like how the that algorithm learns, right, from... Um, Actually, it learns from behavior, right? Yes. And uh, I know that uh, you're a customer behavior specialist. And can you can you tell tell our audience like how important it's to understand human psychology, uh, behavioral economics to be able to? Because an algorithm is dumb in the in the sense that it will do what yes. a human being asks it ask uh, ask it to do. So, like, how important is to understand th that? that basic human psychology, human behavioral psychology, to be able to upgrade, update, and, um, and enhance the, um, the benefits of, of your algorithms. Right, of course. So learning and understanding your customer is huge because the decisions that you make moving forward, it's less error, right? There's less room for error because you can almost predict uh, the behaviors and the habits of your customers. So in a live example, then you kind of know how to set up your merchandising rules because you know what your customers are looking for. So it's very, very important to understand what niche you're going into, what your target market is, and then once they become customers, how do they behave, right? What kind of customers do you have? Do you have blueprint customers? Do you have nurturers, right? Some customers who are on a let's say thrift store, online thrift store, are going to be very different customers and behave very differently than if I'm looking at pool supplies, right? So if you're in a pool supply store, you have to understand your customers are returning often and they're probably very loyal customers for a long time. So things like um, incentives are really important for those kind of customers. Like, hey, you bought this pool part. 
do you possibly need this kind of cool part? So you know that those customers will probably want more VIP treatment because they're more loyal, things like that, versus if you're on a thrift store, they're more browsing, they're going to come in now, but they might not be as loyal to the purchases and things like that. So you constantly have to just grab them with marketing. Hey, check out what's new. Maybe they'll buy this time, things like that. So understanding your customers, their habits, and even you might have different types of customers within one store. Obviously, that's very, very normal in e-commerce. So you really have to have different strategies even within one store um, based off of the types of customers you have. We always, you know, about, about that last um, topic that you mentioned, um, we always so tend to, you know, recommend our customers. Like, yes, it's going to happen. You're not going to have like one size fits all, right? But there's always the case that, the, I like to, always to reference it, the Pareto principle, you know, that 20% of your customers are going to bring 80% of your sales or your revenue. So it's not, and, 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 I, and I'm mentioning this for people not to go crazy that they need to understand the details, right? It, it compounds. So actually just understanding that 20% can allow you to focus and shift your personalization, your, your, um, e-commerce experience to that 20% because they're going to drive the 80%. And also not to forget that the other 80% are going to be benefit from that as well. Right? Yes. Yes. And I think that's where the AI learning is really beneficial because analytics, you don't, you really don't have to guess, you know, platforms like fast Simon, we have so much information coming through to, through the platform, through analytics, to show the, I tell them, hey, just let it run for 30 days. Yeah. Let Fast Simon run for 30 days. See what you learn from your analytics. And then that there's your answer. There's literally your answer. Who should you be paying attention to, right? And that comes to that 20% that you were speaking of that brings in a lot of those conversions. So you really want to make sure, okay, let's grab that audience because they are prominent in our analytics. So definitely AI is super beneficial even if it's not a long-term move it could still be a short-term move to understand what's going on in your store um, and see what's working what's not what can you harness um, and that all comes and plays into really understanding your customer if you does it happen to you because it happens to us like all the time does it happen to you that maybe merchants uh, think they know their customers no that's not for me we know them we've been in business for x amount of years like kind of leave us alone. And the ones that you do that's research and you show them the data, they're like, whoa, we really didn't know our customers or we were missing this other angle that would increase revenue and, uh, and uh, conversion rates and average order value by a lot. That, does it happen it, to you? It, I, it hasn't happened to me personally while I've been at Fast Simon, but I've seen merchants uh, kind of have that aha moment yeah. Where, because this is a very fast moving industry. So Absolutely. there's often, it's just like, oh, we didn't know about this. Or, oh, we didn't know that this was an angle we could take. We didn't know that this was a feature. So sometimes it really is me educating the merchants to letting, to letting them know, hey, this feature, based off of everything else that's going on in your store, I think it could be really beneficial. So it does, it does happen on the education side where it's like, oh, it's not that they're fighting it, but more, we didn't even know that this was an angle we could attack it at. And so it is kind of, you know, a, a position where you kind of wear many hats when you're on the forefront of e-commerce, because I see all these gears working together. And so I have to really communicate that to the merchant and saying, hey, you do know your customers, right? It's not that they don't know their customers. It's that there's more to their customer than they realize, right? So it's like, oh, my customer actually really likes SMS codes. You wouldn't have discovered that, right, if you haven't been doing that for 10 years. It's like, well, sometimes you do need to take those risks. Um, so well, I, experimentation, I always, right? Like constantly. Of, of course, you know, do all those trials and see what works out for your stores. You know, everyone offers demos and trials. And at Fast Simon here, we love to extend our trials because it's like, let the numbers speak to itself. And so you can really learn your customer because I think, you know, it is a risk to take on a new program and it's like, well, we know our customers the best. Why would we need this? And it's true. And I, I, I do appreciate that merchants 
kind of respect their customers in that way and want to protect that journey. But also there's a lot of new journeys that are coming on and we want to drive and push that to make sure that no one's getting left behind either. So I'm also, little... also understanding that it, this changes like very, very fast and it's definitely not something that you set and forget, right? Like yeah. it's a continuous learning process, like um, forever, basically. You, you'll, you'll, you'll never finish, you'll never end. So uh, you keep learning about your customers because your customers change and your uh, customers change with the technology. So there are many variables that are at, at stake here that you need to have an eye on. Yes, and I what I have seen, Diego, is analytics be surprising. So, for example, let's say a merchant will try something new, like our fast Simon and attentive integration, right? We just launched this new integration for SMS, so there's a new angle of marketing here. And customers are now bringing in almost, or excuse me, merchants are bringing in new types of customers. So they're like, oh, wow, we actually have a jump in traffic. And this launch is actually a lot higher than we expected now. And it's like, yeah, it seems like these uh, new integrations are working for you. So it's like now you have all this information, it's working, and now you're kind of overwhelmed. And you're like, oh, my gosh, we have to, you know, create more segments. And we have to bring in a team member to harness all this AOV that we're getting. The conversion is it's like, you know, it's doing two times better than programs like Clavio and people are surprised and now they want to really jump in. So it's, it's organizing that information, making it very clear. And, you know, I, I love happy surprises and over delivering where it's like, we weren't expecting this to work, but now that it is, it's paying for itself and we really need to deep dive into this. So I highly encourage merchants to always read up on what's going on and new integrations like This, you know, let's say you already use Fast Simon or you already use Tensive is like it, all it takes is a plug in and you just never know how your store could shoot up and benefit. Well, you know, you're bringing in like this very hot topic about integrations. Uh, I like to take a look at it at like the ecosystem. Right. And I, I understand that the magic happens in the connections. Right between the different tools. And it's not just uh, because just connecting two tools together doesn't have any effect by itself, right? It's the how you manage those that that data for one another, right? For example, just to share with a with um and I I would like your your opinion on this to share with your audience. If you start learning what is it that your customers are looking for, you can create segments, for instance, For SMS, or you can create segments in Clavio, and you can send uh, different flows or different campaigns. And at the same time, you can measure the ones that had uh, engaged the most and use that to create lookalike audiences in your paid ads or in your social. And you can start, um, I don't know, personalizing the message just for those questions. So, so it it compounds in an incredible way. And like you said, like and and I. I would like your opinion on that, how, how those interactions work and how that ecosystem helps increase the most critical metrics that are actually it's uh, average order value, conversion rate and lifetime value. So h how is it seeing this happening? Sure. So what happens is when you have integrations, it's really a share of information. It's a share of information on the back end. It's a logic that we push for just literally analytics and numbers. We say, hey, all these people searched red tops. Would you like to create a segment for all these people who searched red tops? So really all we do is we have all this information from the search bar, the Fast Simon collection pages, the filters even. And so customers, when we push that information into Attentive through our integration, or let's say Clavio, we also have one with Tapcart which is huge in the market. It's like people want to now have this beautiful display on their own platform, which is great because it's a, a whole different experience. So through Fast Simon, we push this information to all, through all these integrations and allow the customer to choose what they would like to do with this information. So for example, with our new attentive, do you want to harness and create a marketing 
campaign for uh, SMS campaign for X, Y customers that visited your new arrivals collection. And if that data is big enough, why wouldn't you create a segment, right? If it's, if it's shooting up for these um, groups of people and also another way that you can use these, it's not always for marketing. It's also a great tool for education. A lot of customers are pulled in by different things. It's not always a, a promo code or things like that. It's are a lot of people landing on educational pages, right? For merchants that do recipes and things like that. SMS and Fast Simon, it's great to harness and educate as well. Like send out these SMS and say, hey, did you know? And it's like, oh, well, we got this information from Fast Simon. But Attentive is doing the legwork. And we also um, give inspiration as well. We actually create our own customer profiles on Fast Simon. And if you don't know what segments to create, that's where the AI comes in and we create profiles for you so that those, based off of those profiles, you can just let us know what marketing you want to push. So instead of trying to figure out the analytics, uh, our AI actually helps our customers in that way too. It's like, oh, well, we know that's going to work. So just let the AI handle it. So it's so great to even have the type of power and manipulation to what you would like to do with all that logic that comes through integrations. I love it, Chanel. And, and where does the merchant see the value, right? The return, right? Like I install, and also I would like you to, to touch upon like, when is the best time to start using such powerful tools, AI tools, like, uh, like Fast Simon, right? Like, and, and when can I start using it? When should I start using it? And where, where is it that I'm going to see the return? Right. That, I think that's a great question. And that's kind of what all the merchants want to know. It's when am I big enough, right? Like when am I a somebody, when is my store large enough to handle this? And one, I think it's great to use these tools to grow your store, to get the word out there. I think social media is huge. So once you really get the word out there about your store and you're seeing that traffic, once you get that traffic, that's when you need to start using these marketing tools. And even if you don't know your customer too, too well yet, I think it's okay to still take that risk because the integrations and the ecosystem will start telling you who your customers are. And some things you will already know, but like we mentioned earlier, you'll start learning something. So I think integrations that are marketing that push information out, like Clavio, like Attentive, and as well as Fast Simon, where the programs are huge, but you can just use a certain component, right? If you just want to use our search bar and autocomplete, that's a marketing tool right there. So as soon as they come into your site, maybe it's their first time, your homepage looks amazing. They're going to click into the search bar. Boom. You need to start putting things right there in your store. Start telling your customer who you are as a merchant, what you're selling, what are your top sellers. So things, little things like that are actually huge because if someone starts falling in love with your product, at the end of the day, sometimes the price is not going to be priority for your customer. They just want the, they just want the product in their hand. They want to try it. They want to have a review and then maybe they'll come back. So you have to. Yeah, have no, one, no one wants to, to compete with pricing, right? Like you know, <laughs> right. That's, that's a race to the bottom. Basically. <laughs> Exactly. So you really have to create this journey um, from the beginning. I think merchants really need to work on their journey from the beginning and kind of understand what your scale is and what integrations and parts of the ecosystem will be able to nurture even as you're starting or as you're just beginning to understand where your niche uh, is in the e-commerce space. Because yes, these are big integrations, but sometimes you know, just start basics with these integrations, start learning and you'll really start to see those conversions come in. Well, and, and, and now that you mention it, like what does, how, how, what does it, um, what does a, an onboarding process for first Simon look like? Right. Yes, so I'm a merchant I I'm, yeah. and you're an expert in that. Right. So, so tell me like, let's, let's imagine I, I sell, I don't know, cups, right? What would, what would uh, an onboarding process look like for me, for example? Sure. So let's say you sell custom hats and you would like Fast Simon to, you know, host your search engine and things like that. 
we have to understand what the customer's goals are and what their expectations are, right? So we have to kind of figure out, okay, where do we align and how can we bridge that for the, for the merchant and our customer? Once we figure that out, the process really at Fast Simon is amazing because we integrate through the app, directly through the app, or you can do SDK if you want a very personalized journey or API if you want to control your own front end. So customers really have a choice of how, how much power and how much responsibility they would like. And once we figure that out, it can take maybe 20 minutes to an hour or up to maybe a few weeks to do implementation, um, depending on the goals and how heavily customized and things like that the merchant wants. We actually do a, have a no-code editor for people who are not engineers like me. Uh, so you can now customize your store through Fast Simon without even coding. And this can match, and it's actually growing as well. This can match your theme. This can add a carousel, take away a carousel for your products, for the PDP page and things like that. So it's it's huge for our merchants who just want because one and the done. Value, the value is on the speed, right? And, and, and actually making, a, making it happen. Exactly. But also it's, it's really showing love to the smaller merchants. I have a lot of, you'd be surprised, big stores and it's a, it's a one man show, right? It's, it's like a one man yeah. e-com show. And funny enough, they're wearing a lot of hats. <laughs> um, so if, if, if you come in and you say, we, we, we sell custom hats, it's like, okay, let's really do um, this marketing and make sure that First of all, people are, it's a clean journey. So it's seamless from before Fast Simon and after Fast Simon. And then you just want to make sure that the journey matches the culture of the store before. You don't want to shock customers either. And if you do that, it has to be extremely intuitive. Um, so when, when it comes to hats specifically, that's a, that's a very uh, obvious customer base. So those kind of implementations are a lot of fun, actually, um, just because a little bit more creative and the custom side of things can be really fun. And that that's just the first step, right? Because then what, what, what what's going to happen there is we're going to see results or not, right? Or we're going right. to realize what's working and what's not working. And, and then, uh, at least for me, it counts the, the, the really fun part, that it's optimization of the, those strategies and actually applying and pivoting and, and testing. And, uh, and what you're doing is you're leveraging more and more AI to be able to, to, to be guided much better in, in that optimization roadmap, road, road Co right? Exactly. And honestly, my favorite customer journey that I've seen at Fast Simon is they come in, they are a little nervous and they say, we're just going to start with the search. Right. We don't want to do collections yet. Let's see how it happens in search. And within 30 days, we have to have you guys on collections. This is just going amazing. It's it's we just need all these features on collections. The customers love it. And then now it's like then you see the analytics on collections. The conversion doubles. OK, well, now we need visual discovery because our customers love it on collections. They they know what they're searching for now. It's so seamless because really what you want to do is. You want to have this experience to your store. You have to find a balance of the experience of your store. But then you also want to make sure that you're getting them to the cart as fast as possible and not forgetting that conversion either. So you really have to find kind of that balance as well. Yeah, you want to sell. Like the other, improving <laughs> the experience is, is to sell. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yes. And sometimes, you know, it's, it is about the experience because what will happen is you'll have those customers that didn't even know they were going to buy something right um that day but they fell in love with the experience and it was so seamless that you know they have an order coming in five or seven days and that's that's my favorite is when it's working so well the customers want to add more features they're seeing those conversions they want to add more features and that's really what fast simon tool is about is let's encompass the entire journey for the customer yeah and i, I want to mention something i'm maybe discuss it with you because Many, th there's many people that think that personalization, it's just adding the name, right? Like, okay, you um, got come to a site. Okay, I got your name. That's so smart. And, and 
Okay. What we're talking about and what really works is personalizing the whole experience. And maybe you don't even have to name them, but to show them what they're uh, looking for, right? Before even they know about that, that's the real personalization experience. Yes. And I would like to make that clear with the personalization experiences at Fast Simon. It's on a merchandising level. It's also on a cookie level, right? So even if you don't have merchandising in place, what that looks like is if a customer comes in, they start searching tops, then they search with a filter, red tops, white tops. Maybe they visit the collection, casual tops. Okay, we're now in the upsell and cross-sell tool, maybe on the PLP page or the PDP page. We're going to start showing that customer tops, right? Specifically red tops. And in Fast Simon, it's so amazing. I love this feature. You can choose how much information you would like to keep. Do you want to remember that customer's information for the last year and then personalize it that way? Or do you want to remember that customer's information for the last two weeks? I always like 30 days because to give some, some time for the customer to leave and come back. But then suddenly on those, uh, Fast Simon widgets, we kind of already know what she might be. In. Maybe it won't be red tops after 30 days, but it'll be tops because maybe she loves this store for tops, right? So then it gets that customer to the cart a lot faster because what she's seeing or what they're seeing is a lot more relevant to what they're looking for as soon as she lands on your site. And I think that's that's the best. On, on a merchandising level, it's uh, it's definitely beneficial for the customer as well as the merchant, because we have things like you can make merchandising rules on Fast Simon to push up maybe um, high and most popular products to the top of the page. Because obviously, if those are bringing in the most traffic, most likely that's what the customer is looking for. But what the AI will do is it'll order that rule to re be as relevant to that customer. So it's like, okay, yes, all these products are popular. But which ones out of these popular products are most relevant for this customer? So it's not a name. It's not about, oh, yes, hey, Michelle, welcome back. Or, hey, Tony, welcome back. It's like, hey, welcome back. We know you love leather pants and you love red tops. Here's a whole outfit that you might like. Or, hey, last month you bought this part for the pool. Are you looking to upgrade that pool? This is the next part you need to buy. And especially if you know your customer, oh, thank God, I'm just here to buy and get off the site. Solving right? a problem. So, solving a problem. And Chanel, um, one, one thing that I, I've seen like growing like crazy in the last couple of years, but in the last, I would say the last six months, more and more uh, accelerated, it's e-commerce for B2B. And yes. I do understand, like people might, might think that this... Uh, type of tools like Fast Simon are mainly for B2C, but they're losing it for like search capabilities for B2B is huge because they might have like very extensive catalogs. So are you seeing that, um, that trend as well? Are you seeing that uh, B2B, because B2B and B2C uh, lines are, are fading out, right? And are you seeing more B2B clients or prospects interested in, in uh, the solutions that you provide? Yes. And it's funny because even within B2B, there's different ways to B2B, which sounds very funny, but it's yeah, true. Definitely. It's um, there's like wholesale, which is considered B2B, but technically those are customers to those other merchants. So we do support B2B and we are actually expanding on it as we're seeing more needs and different needs for these B2B customers. Uh, we have a merchant right now who is live with Fast Simon doing B2B because their customer base, and it's great because those, you know, they're returning. So you know exactly what to do, how to do it. So it is um, probably the implementation process and the strategic side is a lot more simple for B2B. It is a lot more tactical what their, what their needs are when it comes to search and how to organize their catalog and things like that. But as we're kind of roaming with it, we do host some right now uh, that are B2B. So we are solutions for those kind of merchants, but you're right. I'm seeing different needs and different kinds of 
B2B interactions. And I think Fast Simon is just trying to learn what those needs are and try to kind of be malleable to those situations as. And it's funny because we actually have to work with the merchants at that point. Because it's like, hey, how can we set this up for you, right? We don't want to lose them and we don't want to forget about them, especially like you said, it's growing. So it's definitely something that we are growing with as well. Chanel, we, we talked about the integrations with other tools like and how those can be leveraged. You, you particularly named Attentive. Uh, we, we named Clavio. What about e-commerce platforms, such as, for instance, Big Commerce, right? Let's, let's use Big Commerce as an example. Uh, how easy it's to implement uh, the Fast Simon tool or, or tools or services, and how does it affect or not performance, right? But that because that's a, a common question of merchants when you start adding to your to your site, like what's the impact in performance, and actually what what if what what's the balance there of all of the the, the other stuff that you're winning, like increasing conversion rates or boosting your average order value? Yes, I think that's a great point. We do merge with so many platforms, obviously big commerce being one of them. It's funny because I almost feel like Fast Simon is too much for big commerce, right? So there aren't as many features on the big commerce because they just don't uh, allow us. But all the features that we can possibly push to big commerce, we do. Because actually, there's a lot of big stores on big commerce that do want to tap into those features. And so Fast Simon is 100% offering those features where we can to those merchants. Um, they actually have the implementation process is a lot faster for big commerce just because of the catalog setup and things like that and the features on the big commerce side. But when it comes to integrations and things like that, Yeah, I mean, Fast Simon, I think, is leading on that for sure, because big commerce is actually, I feel like, growing I, uh, as the smaller merchants come in. I think they're more keen to, you know, doing big commerce at first, and then maybe later they want to upgrade or things like that, and then kind of decide what they want to do. But Fast Simon is 100% accessible to those kind of merchants. And I think it's actually really great to see The, on the big commerce side, uh, they're actually starting to pull in more features as well. And so by the time big commerce updates, we're like, oh, we're already here. So here's the no code editor. And we're so glad that you can tap into it now. So um, big commerce, we have a few stores that are growing in traffic. So for us, we have to make sure that our sync is on point and it's very quickly, even for the big commerce. And we are implementing the process for that is pretty fast. It's very, very fast. What well, one, one topic that we didn't touch upon is like, you also provide the capabilities for AB testing, right? So, um, that's, that's the basis of, of growth, right? AB testing, testing continuously, like using, uh, the winner as control and then create a B, a B version. So how does, how does that work with, with your tool with Fast Simon? Yes, I'm so glad you asked me that because I've actually been diving pretty deep into it lately. So A-B testing allows the customer to see what strategies on Fast Simon are working and better than others, right? So it's not that it's not working, but what's working the best. And right now we, we use uh, Google Optimize to help the customer see what information from Fast Simon and things like that and compare uh, those two scenarios. So what happens is the information from Fast Simon goes into Google Optimize where you set up the two scenarios, the A and the B, and then from there you can change CSS and things like that and really set up the, for example, do you want filters to load open or do you want to load them on collapse, right? What should you use the real estate on your page for? What are customers more interacting with? If, if, you know, maybe they don't need to see the filters, the people who want to use it will open them, right? So what's better for our store? So right now you just see all those results. Uh, when you set it up through Google Optimize, the, it's pushed back to Fast Simon, and then we know what scenario to implement for or to implement for you. 
Okay, love it. So now, yes. I would like you to share um, the first that comes to your mind, like a client that you've enjoyed working um, with and maybe some con counterintuitive findings that you might uh, have find with, with customers. Because uh, what I love about like digging into data and learning and testing is when you start finding things that you would never have imagined before, right? Does any, any client comes to mind? Um, where it's like, um, wait, wait, what, what was the word that you use where it's like fighting each other? Like it doesn't make sense. No, that counterintuitive. Like, okay. When you, when you find, you know, when you start, uh, digging into data, you start testing, you start getting insights and you start getting like, okay, I, I wouldn't never yes. imagine this. Yes. So, well, one thing is you want to make sure everything is working correctly. So if you ever see data that's a little surprising, I always like to, you know, kind of make sure everything's ironed out, connected properly. So that's my first kind of uh, line of defense, if you want to say, when I see that kind of data. And then the next thing is I, it usually happens around like drops or uh, events that bring in unique customers. So that usually those kind of spurts and things like that happen when there's like an event. And I, I can't say that it's been like consistent where it's like surprising and it's like, oh, wow, we need to do something about this. But I do see sometimes data kind of <laughs> look interesting around uh, drops or new collections and things like that or events or even like sales. I know sometimes sales... Um, will kind of bring in a different kind of flow or especially around holidays where it's like, okay, we have all this traffic, but nobody used filters. That's interesting. It's like, how come our filter usage went down when there's a whole bunch of traffic? Well, it's like, okay, but look, take a look at your collections. Everyone was using your collections and just use that instead. And, you know, you kind of have to piece a lot more things together. Um, so one, I have seen that with our, with our merchant, um, E Favor Mart, they are like a decor, decor and like party store around like graduations and things like that. You'll see some really interesting analytics um, or, for example, like season changings. For we for some reason around Fourth of July, we saw a lot of uh, like Tiki Hut analytics really? like uh, for some reason on fourth of july everyone was having a tiki party and i'm we were <laughs> looking at it like what's going on here and sometimes you know you really don't understand the data right away um but then when you take a step back it's like oh people like to have themed parties for fourth of july and we're maybe we're missing that right so it's like something that we can not forget about i, I think you know when you see those kind of books definitely deep dive into it those funny analytics and see at least why, because sometimes those can snowball, right? Those yeah. can snowball into other things. And it's like, you don't want to get left behind on learning those kind of things. Cause let's say next year, okay, let's, let's make a collection on themed parties and let's launch it right around 4th of July and see what happens. And I bet you that those analytics will make a lot more sense. And at, at the time of this recording, I know people would see this um, later. It's 15th of September now, but we're coming to Q4, right? Yes. The holiday seasons, like the real uh, e-commerce time. So how, how am I, if I'm a merchant, I, I, am I in a good time to implement Fast Simon to leverage what's going to happen in Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Would you yes. recommend... <laughs> Yes, I'm like right now before Q4 now. starts is <laughs> like when you should do it because yeah. what what I'm seeing is Q3 is heavy on site flips. So Q3, a lot of customizations go down. I'm involved in a lot of projects right now where customers are updating all their themes. BigCommerce, um, Shopify, everyone's like updating their themes right now. Two, any problems, any persistent uh, it, uh, like lack of features or uh, problems, like little bugs that are happening. Everyone wants to iron those out right now. So I have a lot of customization projects as well. Last minute are like, panic, right? It's it's not panic. It's like this needs to be done before Q4 because Q4 everyone goes on a on a code lockdown. Yeah, it's like no crazy. changes made, and 
it's it's true. You want to be prepared and have those themes, customizations, and that site flip ready to go so that you can harness that, right? You want to have QA cleared one and done well before you go live for Q4 because it makes sense. You don't want to make any changes. You want to make sure everything works before all this traffic jump that's about to happen. Also, it's a great time to strategize and do your A-B testing during Q3 so that you know the best strategy moving into Q4 um, because you don't want that panic. When it comes with panic and things like that, that means that your, your competitors are already kind of ahead of you because they're probably not panicking. So you want to just make sure that the strategies you're using are based off of the analytics that you've studied, the QA, the testing. You've, I always tell my merchants, don't guess. Don't kill yourself guessing and trying this. No, the, look at the numbers and think like that. Tools. And you have the tools. And that's Listen another correctly. thing. Make sure you have. Yes. Love that. Exactly. I love it, Chanel. Okay, so... We've unfortunately we've come to an end. There's many many different things that uh, we should be also talking about, maybe for a, a second episode with you. But I want to thank you very much for uh, having joined us today. Where can people uh, reach you? Yes, please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. I I'm always on there, learning, seeing what other people are doing. New tools on there as well. Uh, you kind of. Uh, Want to definitely connect if and pick my brain. I'm I'm happy uh, to do that on you know street level. Uh, so feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Follow me on LinkedIn. We have an amazing blog on Fast Simon as well. Highly recommend checking that out if you just want to learn what's going on in the AI community. Uh, we we always incorporate knowledge into those articles, uh, so it's also a great resource as well. And then. If you ever have any questions, we have an amazing 24-7 support. So it, that might actually be me as well. So if, if anyone ever has, you know, feel free to come to Fast Simon directly as well. And you might have a demo from me, you know, so feel free to Beautiful. come hang out with us. Yes. Okay. So everyone, you know, you can get in touch with Chanel. Chanel, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. See you guys in the e-commerce side. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. So that's it for today's, uh, for this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Spotify and all of our socials. I'm Diego Praderi, and this was The Link. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.